presents we're talking about reviewing the cult classic 1982 film 81 don't don't get confused it said release eight. the credits say 81 i guess it's when it made it released in 82 so it was made in 81 yeah 81 82 already confusing class of 1984 so we got three different years here. It doesn't really fucking matter it does. at all. It does not. It does not at all. It just, it, they made a futuristic movie set 16 months in the future. <laughs> which nothing about it looked futuristic at all, which no. is good. I which mean, is good, because it was only 16 months. Exactly. So no no hoverboards, no fucking DeLorean time machines, nothing like that. No, no there could have been. No, wink, wink. <laughs> no chappy scouts. Yeah. So just, just fucking, just regular ass future, you know, 16 yeah. months. So anyway, basic premise of this movie was the director, he really wanted to say that the schools was getting bad with some gangs and shit and some yeah. crimes and... <laughs> like, 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 no normally, like, the, a fucking movie maker is not so sympathetic with violence against teachers. This is a first yeah. for me. I and mean, he was like, yeah. he was so passionate. I mean, the, even the fucking opening fucking caption talked about how every year 280,000 attacks on exactly. teachers. And, like, no, no, so far, so far, no school has ever been as bad as Lincoln. Yet. Yes. So basically, the movie starts out. Perry King plays the teacher. There's a cool opening song by Alice Cooper. He's driving through the dun, ghetto. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. What do I you do <laughs> when a dream becomes a nightmare? Ah, I would love to see a video for that. Like, <laughs> I don't think there so was so ominous and shit. But yeah, so the teacher he's driving through the ghetto just to get to the school. So he got it. He should have known. <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <clears throat> dude, the m m motherfuckers from Nebraska. I don't know how he ends up taking a job and fucking this awful fucking ghetto New York public school. He's got a nice house with a fucking wife who's like six months pregnant. Mm -hmm. And then he pulls his car, his fucking poopy ass fucking long car into the school parking lot. Yeah. There's fucking graffiti everywhere. I know, People, dicks drawn dicks, on the wall. Dicks, dicks drawn. Yeah. Faculty parking is spray painted to be fuckledy parking, which yeah. I thought was very, very cute. <laughs> There's actually somebody like just doing it. You see the guy doing yeah, it. Yeah, he's doing it, yeah. yeah. As the teacher's driving by. And like, I get the feeling that like every week they replace the sign and he just does it again. Yeah. <laughs> Faculty. Every week. So he meets a, he meets a fellow teacher, Roddy McDowell, one of the who's, who's getting his briefcase ready for, for school, which includes a handgun. Right, one of, the, one, of the, one of the best opening scenes in yeah. a fucking movie. Like, you see Roddy McDowell open his fucking case, and there's a fucking handgun in there. Yeah. And Perry King sees it, and he's like, what do you have that for? Yeah. So naive. And he's like, so you'll naive. learn, you don't know. Is this your... And he goes, where have you taught before? And Perry King goes, this is my first time, or nowhere. Yeah. And Roddy goes, that's what I thought. Well, well fucking, what do you have that for? Maybe because I don't want my wife to get raped. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So he goes, oh. and it's it, it, you know it's a lot of repetitive scenes, but basically he runs into a gang of punks. Uh, Timothy Van Patten plays the main punk, and like unibrow, he, yeah, yeah, Chisel unibrow, face. fucking puffy hair. But he's got some fashionable clothes for a punk. He's more like a designer punk, right? Right. Well, and actually, I've, I I I'd never seen this before, but I kind of called it because I'm sitting here talking to the gun. I'm like, dude, this fucking guy is the most clean cut punk, and he's the leader. I bet he comes from this nice suburban family. It turns out later he actually does. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's not a spoiler alert because you can fucking figure. But, this but his out. his gang around him, I get the feeling, are actually poor dumb fucks. Poor dumb that, fucks. That he's exploiting, and they look up to him because yeah. he's got the smart, so he knows how to lead them. But he's actually the scrawniest one. He's scrawny, clean cut, yeah. blonde hair, fucking nice in, in, in this game, they just ain't some bullies. They sell drugs at the school. There's, they actually yeah. have an office at a punk nightclub. They do. Where, <laughs> where they make girls get naked and they have sex as prostitutes. Right, right. It's, it, like, people go and say, I want to work for you guys. And they're like, what yeah. can you do for us? Yeah. Oh, you're too young. Get out of here. Oh, you want to be a whore? Well, get like, naked. Get naked and we'll go test the goods. I mean, it's, it, he's a fucking businessman, goddammit. It's fucking crazy. Exactly. Fucking doing coke off the desk. But it's, 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 it's such a weird group of fucking punks. Like, like this whole whole school is run by this one gang of just fucking five fucking punks and they don't have like traditional weapons like guns or anything like a couple of them have maybe some switchblades yeah. but they're just so menacing and their reputation yeah, I guess, and they yeah. beat everybody they up beat everybody. Dude, there's a scene where fucking this, uh, this uh, young black guy is tr just trying to sell some fucking weed all he wants to do is sell some yeah. fucking weed or speed what's or wrong with that in high school yeah and so they fucking beat him up and say we're the only people that fucking sell, <laughs> sell drugs here and they fucking so they have, they have a rumble with the black gang and all the black gang the way they dress is kind of like the crew like they look these guys look like they're rolling with Africa Bambada with <laughs> the little scarves and shit yeah, on their hands. Like, red hand they look like they're gonna be a gang thing. from the Warriors. Or exactly. I totally thought Warriors in that yeah. scene, by the way. But just just a little interesting side scene to show that they're they're not afraid to go up against other gangs and fucking fight them and shit. So I mean, they, they fucking bring it, dude. They you know they they ain't afraid of it. They'll fight. They're yeah, not a pussy gang. They'll fight. So they set this up, and basically what happens is the basic story of it is. 
Uh, Perry King plays the music teacher, and every time he's trying to teach these motherfuckers how to play the el elbow and trumpet and shit, yeah. <laughs> like these gangs are coming in and like pushing everything, like oh. knocking the desk over and, and shit. And don't forget, one of the students is young Mikey J. Fox. Yeah, Michael Fox. Credited as Michael Fox. Yeah. I didn't even recognize him. He's he, so young. He plays this fucking prepubescent, pudgy fucking trumpet playing and, nerd and, kid. And, and this being an 80s whatever movie, obviously there's some kids at the school that look like they're 30 years old. Michael Fox doesn't. He looks like a high school kid. He's the only one that looks like a high school kid, which is another funny thing about the movie. It doesn't really detract from it, because what are you going to do? Yeah. Almost every fucking kid looks like they're played by a fucking 38-year-old But fucking I, I prefer man. it, though, and honestly, because how are you going to be afraid of a true 15-year-old? How? Exactly, you know? exactly. I mean, one of, the, one of the gang members, I don't know his name, I just call him Moose. He's just this big old fat guy yeah. who never, ever, 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 ever covers his fucking front This motherfucker's at least 34. He just, he, he just, all, the whole movie, he's just showing his hairy chest and his big gut, but he's like yeah. the muscle of the group, so yeah. they need him, of course. He's dumb as fuck, and he's always smoking. But anyway, I digress. Michael Fox was young as fuck. He was. And basically what happens is, the, you know, without spoiling too much, is is the punks to keep challenging the teacher, and I mean, they, like, not just, like, fucking trying to beat him up and shit, they blow up his car. They blow up his fucking they car. They fucking blow it up. It's ridiculous. I mean, like, I mean, just, it, it's a slow burn of, like, a culmination of what they do. The first thing they do is kind of mild. They go up to his house, and they fucking use a water gun, and they spray fake, fake blood, blood in his yeah. face. And there's a, and, and then just if from there it just goes fucking downhill, and you keep thinking they, they, they want him to back off, but he won't. He won't be intimidated right, by right, punk exactly. kids. So, but at the same time, he don't realize how hardcore they are. Probably he doesn't, and we the yeah. viewers don't either, because like right. I said, we're showing just a little bit at a time of each little thing they do is a <sighs> slightly more worse. And so as a viewer, you're thinking, how possibly bad can it get? These are just fucking yeah. high school kids. Come on, they're all how 17. bad can it get? And that's why he can't get the cops to do anything about him. Is the cop is like, oh, they're seventeen, can't do shit. Yeah, why yeah. not? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, don't, don't they have juvie hall? 1981 exactly the so the, the principal says we can't touch him the cops say we can't touch him meanwhile they're clearly fucking vicious animals yeah. and um and it's kind of a it's kind of a tragedy in the sense that this man led to his own downfall which we're not going to get into spoilers but like his obsession with them he wanted to be the one man that was going to make a difference kind of yeah. like fucking james yeah. Bush and the he, principal he, like, like this is basically stand by me gone wrong the it teacher is. It comes is. into yeah. the shitty school and he right. can't change nothing everybody everybody <laughs> tells him to back off like for your own sake just please just back off yeah. and, and they, the, principal, the principal even said no your job is is not really to teach and in fact, he only has four classes a day. The other four periods, he's got to fucking be a Look home in monitor. the bathrooms yeah. and shit for drugs. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, we ain't gonna spoil it. But I, I will say that as a man, as a husband, like he pretty much loses everything. Like that's why you got to see this movie too. This ain't just no chicken shit show. These fuckers go far, the, man. These fuckers are. I mean, the, it, it's the like, end. Yeah, it's, it's like just, straw dogs in a high it school. It is. It is straw dogs. It's very, very Dario Argento like. I mean, mm -hmm. to just, 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 just not only see what the kids are capable of, but to fucking see what the teacher was capable of. I exactly. mean, like it's like tit for tat. Like you hurt me, I hurt you back. You hurt me, I hurt you worse. I mean, and the teacher is just fucking at the end. It's almost crazy with the, the vengeance that he has for these fucking kids. And, and this, yeah. This is like a no, well, it's like a four million dollar low budget, but no name real movie. It made it was such a big hit. The director then they signed him to do Firestarter and Commando with Schwarzenegger. Yeah, exactly, so it, exactly. I mean, it just shows that you know this was the movie that you know catapulted his career. So, so I mean, it, it, it's 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 a long movie, but it's slow got, burn, it's very slow burn, very very well payoff at the fucking exactly. end. Exactly, surprising payoff. I mean, I'm watching this shit with my fucking mouth. A, a game, a game. My, my, <laughs> and my eyes bulging. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? I know. That's crazy. I just, fucking shit. I mean, like, the last half hour, would you say everything just fucking oh, shit. snowballs downhill, blows up. It, it gets beyond like, out like, of control. Like, 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 fuckers die that you wouldn't think were going to die. Exactly. Bad things happen to people you didn't think were going to happen to. It's, it's just amazing how fucking bad it gets for everybody. Nobody wins in this movie. So, as a movie, just slow burn, but actually sticking the landing, which a lot of these revenge type films do not, mm. but this one does it. I really enjoy this movie. I've really, ever since I bought this DVD, I watched it two or three times, so I like it a lot. I would give Class of 1984 an 8 out of 10. No that, problem. That's funny. That's exactly what I was going to give it. Maybe higher than you thought. I did think the writing was a little bit sloppy. There's a little bit of rewriting of history. They're not consistent with the story. I'm not going to ruin it for you because if you don't catch it, you might enjoy the movie better than I did. Ah. The, the picture and sound on this is being only a DVD. There is a Blu-ray currently in the works. Maybe, maybe for release later this summer. We don't know. But 
I can't review it if it ain't that much. No, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but so, yeah. the DVD is serviceable enough. Yeah. It's great quality. It's it, fine. And dude. I will say this older movies where they didn't shake the camera around, the, the DVD compression, it doesn't have art as hard of a time. So it looks better. It looks cleaner. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's okay. Gotcha. If, if you watch a DVD of a new movie with all the shaky camera, it looks terrible. Oh, oh, terrible. Okay. And you can see all the little art. So this is actually a good looking DVD. Yeah. You can listen to the sound of stereo or they did do a surround sound remix, which mm -hmm. I thought was pretty good. It didn't sound too fake when we I listened to it, yeah. you know? So, Fine, you would never even know it was that old ass movie. Alice Cooper song was banging in my surround sound speakers. Bow, 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 bow. So slow, but so ominous. With the clockwork orange rip off beginning. It was. Bow, bow, bow. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it, fun, it, funny you should mention that because a lot of the elements of the, of the fucking high school violence were yeah. reminiscent of, of a clockwork, clockwork orange. Which yeah, the exactly. director admitted to. So he just paying homage to it. It was, so, and yeah. it was not a rip off. It was no. clearly an homage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I like it in a way. It's almost realistic, though, because it's almost like these kids are ripping off clockwork orange. Oh, with the fashion styles. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so huh. it wasn't just, you know. Give you something to think about. Wrap that around your head. The old, the old malo choke. Get the fucking to choke and the fucking exactly. oil. So picture and sound for it only being oh, a God. DVD, being an old ass movie, it still was good. I would give it fucking picture and sound 7 out of 10. Very passable. I don't care because it didn't matter to me. I thought it was great. So I'll just give it a 7 out of 10 too because I found no flaws with it. I'm not sure how to find flaws with the fucking sound and picture, actually. The special features, I would read them off the back of the disc, but it doesn't say anything for some reason on the package of special features. But I know there's a director's commentary, I think maybe a trailer. Not a whole lot. Special features, I feel like, you know, they did a good job. And I think the new Blu-ray that's going to come out is a big special feature and shit, but again, I don't so wait, have wait, it. What, was there commentary or not? Yes, there was. I listened to it one time. But, um... Bare minimum, I felt on the special features. Hopefully, the upcoming special edition from another company will will fix that. So, special features, I'm only going to give it five out of ten. Although I did Ooh. really like the commentary from the director. He tells you all about it. So, wow. Oh, um, well, I'll just give it a six then. All right, six. Snizzy. So that's it for class of nineteen eighty four. Class of nineteen eighty four. Are we even going to mention the like, sequel with the robot teachers? Or yeah, not? there is a sequel that's made by the same director, but it it actually f kind of flips the script, and it's more about the teachers are the bad guys because there are some robots that were sent in to infiltrate, and it's definitely worth watching. I own the DVD of it, but I don't consider it a real sequel to class of nineteen. It's not a legitimate sequel. Don't think of it as that. It's, it's yeah. just. It got Pam Greer in it, so check it out if you want. And, and and that one, even though it's was released in the early '90s, set '99, like they do try to go futuristic with that one. Like they put some like I don't know, like plastic parts on the cars to make them oh, look fancy and shit. Nice, and nice. clearly the robots, obviously, like the robots are just Terminator ripoffs. <laughs> <laughs> like they get their face ripped off, and it's just a Terminator. Like it looks just as good as a Terminator, but it's just like I don't know. Well, and, like and they have like some rocket launcher hands, yeah, yeah, yeah and some little puppets. It, it's fine, but I don't know. Like it, it like class of nineteen ninety nine a lot, but as a real true film lover to history, paying homage to Stanley Kubrick's Talk of Orange, I like class of nineteen eighty four way better. And see it for young ass Michael Fox. Teacher, oh, teacher, God. we are the future. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with me? What's, What's the matter with you? you? What's the matter with matter? Ah! We are the future. I am the future. <laughs>